Hello there, ghostly audience, and welcome back to the Great Partition, League War Edition. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, you might notice that I'm actually not in observer mode right now. Uh, I have tag switched over to Austria to show the League War in a little bit more detail. So the two League leaders are Austria and Prussia. I'm going to go ahead and tag switch into Prussia after I'm done with Austria to show uh, how things look from their side. That said, we'll go ahead and click on the war button over here. We can see that both the League leaders holding down some pretty significant war exhaustion. Austria with 8.1, Prussia with 9.4. A lot of the contribution coming from Austria on the Catholic side. Uh, I think some of their people that have been knocked out had a bit more participation, and that's why this is showing as it is. Over on the Protestant side, though, things a little bit more clean cut. We can see Prussia with 22%. Denmark, surprisingly, with 15%. They've not been a major player in this campaign, but doing well in the League War. Uh, Lubick with 19%. They've been a strong force for the Protestant side. And Russia with 14%. Uh, a couple of the miners also filling in the gaps there, including Jalray with a respectable 7 As far as numbers go, the Protestant side has the advantage with 14k more infantry and about uh, 9k more cav. However, the Catholic side does have about 17, or perhaps, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it 17,000 more cannons. As far as casualties are concerned, though, those have favored the Protestant side. They've only lost 380 infantry and, sorry, they've lost 380 due to, uh, in total, whereas the Catholics have lost 514,000 in total. We've seen a lot of borders change uh, since the League War fired. Uh, we did see the Livonian Order split up into its uh, constituents again. They'll have to take out Estonia and Livonia again if they want to be whole. Novgorod was knocked out for semi-little loss. They did lose really a lot of their good provinces, but then won a war against Norway, so good for them. We saw Nitra take quite a hit at the end of the last one, uh, the last part. They were forced to give a lot of provinces, some disjointed provinces, back to Hungary, including Pest itself. And we also saw Spain forced to give Valencia back to Gata uh, Catalonia, also forced to give Port or Coimbra, Bragantia, Evora, and Beja back to Portugal. Looks like Madeira was also given back to them. So, uh, I don't think things are going to change for Portugal because of that, but still interesting that uh, people were being nice to them. As we can see right now, Austria has 60,000 troops. He has 40,000 up in Ostmark, perhaps ready to go after Prussia itself, we'll see. Also has 20,000 over here in, well, formerly the last province of Kassim, I believe that's Mansur. Uh, maybe looking to go after Russia, or perhaps just to try to defend Odiev. We'll now tag over to Prussia. Prussia, as we can see, has their stack over here trying to take back Alsace. And uh, they don't have quite as many outright men as uh, Austria has, but uh, we do see Russia over here deploying its men to the Polish front, which had former uh, for Poland had formerly been pretty much full sieged by Russia, Mazovia, and a little bit of help from Prussia, but uh, now mostly cleaned up by the Catholic forces, Russia might have a little something to say about that. Regardless, we know where the Space Marines are. This army of Gasconese might be in trouble if uh, Prussia decides to break this siege. But that is how things look for the leaders. We've seen kind of some of the results. Notably, Great Britain uh, also pieced out of the League War. They didn't lose Calais because of this, they'd lost that earlier, but uh, regardless, uh, I think the League War will be ending very soon. Gonna go back into Observer Mode and let's see how they fare. As we saw, the war score was only 1% in favor of the Protestants, and nobody was all that enthused to uh, continue this war. We may, in fact, see a piece of Westphalia here. Not 100%. Uh, I think the Catholics have a lot more forces in the places where those forces are going to make a difference. 
But, well, they will have to contend with Space Marines if they uh, want to really get a serious grip on this war. They will have to contend with Russia, whose troops have actually gone back into Russian territory. They do have some Muscovite particularists, as well as some pretender rebels that they apparently want to deal with before they re-engage in the League War front. Or not. Russia is knocked out of the war. That's a bad one for the Protestants. The League War has simply ended. Did we have a peace of Westphalia? We did. Religious peace in the Empire. Everybody looking and voting for their own people, whether that be Protestant or Catholic. All things considered, uh, I think the Catholics are going to maintain themselves as far as the uh, as far as the emperorship is concerned but Austria actually getting some imperial authority at this point uh, heretic prince is still decreasing that by quite a bit but now that the league war is resolved Austria getting 0 0.05 imperial authority a month though part of that's due to internal peace as soon as internal peace ends uh, that's going to be negative. Austria does need to appoint some more free cities, five out of the seven needed, but uh, they are full on electors, and I doubt we'll be seeing a uh, revoking of the privilegia or anything like that, but... Hey, so it goes. So now that we've paused and the League War has ended, let's see how things are going in the East. Wu has lost a bit of its southern territory, Min has been spat out from them, However, we can see from the mandate here that they are still the Emperor, and they actually have picked up another tributary. Wu, formerly with nine, now with ten tributaries. They did lose that war to Yan. I think this territory was all lost to them, uh, including Qi, which has been surviving over here for the longest time, but no longer. So Yan, looking pretty good again, now that they uh, have lost the Emperorship, have also taken a significant bit of Korea. And uh, I'm surprised Japan hasn't jumped on this and tried to take South Korea, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, looks like Japan's going a bit isolationist this time. Actually, I'm going to tag switch into Japan. We'll look at the Shinto religion. Actually, no. They have open doors. Uh, have not gone isolationist. Have had to deal with the pirates, the Shushigaku and the Ikoiki. But uh, still have a few more incidents to go. We'll see if they end up going isolationist at all. Japan's sitting on one of the world's bigger armies. They have 59,000. I knew is a tributary state. Uh, really, if they wanted to do things, they could. They have simply chosen not to. I will go back into observer mode and let the world run again. Don't need too much of this video being taken up by League War discussion, considering that it ended a little earlier than I expected. Uh, really the big winners in that war, I think, are Hungary and Portugal, though Portugal can't say how long that's going to be a thing. Um, not much change for the likes of Poland or Mazovia. Actually, I think Poland might have been given Chelmno back. Uh, I'm not 100% there. Regardless, uh, Silesia also appears to have gained Ratabor back. But really for the, the heavy hitters there, Austria didn't lose much of anything, Prussia didn't lose much of anything. Spain actually was knocked out of its first great power spot by that though. Uh, Russia now the number one great power, as they do have all of the relevant institutions including uh, global trade. Austria still in third, but very closely followed by Great Britain in fourth, those with 651 and 647. Persia still in fifth with 559, but 839 should they manage to embrace the printing press. The Mamluks in sixth with 359, 410 if and when they embrace global trade. Poland, formerly in eighth, now in seventh with 309 development, all institutions embraced. And Bahmanis in eighth, with 288 
development, 618, or sorry, 288 tech modified development. They are down by three institutions. They don't even have colonialism yet. Let's see how close those are over here. So Bahmanis is picking up global trade, but I mean, colonialism is just nowhere near here. It doesn't appear that colonialism is spreading past Persia. Uh, I guess it's gotten into Delhi and might be able to make its way down to Bahmanis from there. But really, things have been pretty well stopped in their tracks uh, as far as colonialism is concerned down here. It's not even jumping across sea zones. You know, it's it's not going to get into Afghanistan because they're, uh, you know, per Persia is not happy with them, and Persia doesn't share a sea zone with anybody that they like in India. The closest one actually being Bahmanis. So if Bahmanis is able to take these provinces, or uh, Persia is, then colonialism should be able to bridge the gap, and Bahmanis will uh, be able to embrace that. But for now, they're enjoying a 114% tech penalty. That's sad for them. That said, Persia is still fighting this big alliance down here. I believe that's the Mamluks, Oman, Morocco, and one other person. Uh, I'll have to look it up. Karaman. Karaman also in this war. None of them have been pieced out, and Persia's hurting. Uh, you know, Persia has been really... I. Aside from Russia, I think they have the most land out of anybody in the game, uh, at least as far as land area is concerned. And they've been one of the great powers since pretty uh, pretty soon into the game, but even they can't stand up to a uh, an alliance of not only another great power in the Mamluks, but some other uh, minor powers that can hit hard. You know, Oman's got 25k, I think. Karaman, we can see, has 20 Morocco has formerly been a great power. I think they have close to 40k? Let's check the ledger. Yeah, Morocco has a force limit of 62, currently has 33. So, uh, that, that's, that's how that goes. You can see Persia actually has the largest standing army out of any nation, even more than Russia right now. Russia, of course, uh, losing a bit of their army in the League War there. But... Right now, I mean, against the combined forces of the Mamluks, Morocco, Karaman, and Oman, they might actually be at a disadvantage. I'm going to tag switch into Persia, this just being the game of tag switching, I suppose, and uh, we'll see how things are stacking up for them. They are at negative 45 war score now, and yes, Persia does have fewer troops than that alliance. Uh, just barely, and not bad for one nation against four, but can see that uh, Persia has not only... Well, actually, Persia's lost fewer. Uh, they've lost about 40k fewer than the uh, alliance here has, but... Looks like they have about a grand total of 5, 10... Oh, about 12,000 less than them, so certainly something that could be evened. It's just the manner in which these guys have spread out, which has really hurt Persia. I mean, Morocco is all the way over here in uh, Kandahar. So Persia really having to defend on a lot of fronts. I think they might be well served by just gathering their armies up and wrecking balling everybody. You know, it'd be pretty tough for Oman and Karaman to try to reinforce the Mamluks here on Baghdad. But... Uh, Persia can choose to do what Persia chooses to do. So I think I'm pretty much done with tag switching for now. I, I might try to do a little bit more of that in the future, especially after major wars conclude. Uh, just try to keep it in observer mode for now. Uh, can sometimes ha have some issues after you do some tag switching. For now, things appear to be okay, but never know. Appears that we have the uh, city of Burgas sitting on Adir and sieging that down. They're also at war with uh, with Russia, so sad for them. But they're also at war with Mentessa, Burgas' conquest of Adir. So uh, I guess they might be able to take that before Russia eats them. Who all is Russia fighting? Appear to have attacked the city of the Borg, perhaps? Yep. And... 
Estonia completely eaten by Livonia. Immediately. Uh, so, so much for that tag. Estonia released and then immediately gotten rid of again, this time at Livonia's hands. I almost wonder if Livonia will be able to take out the Livonian order. And if they do, if they will form Kurland. That'd be fun to see. Something I've seen but not commented on in any of the videos uh, is that Stockholm actually ended up in Norway's hands somehow. I don't know if they got some allies and fought Denmark for it, if Denmark had an embezzler that sold it to him, or what happened. I mean, I think they've been fairly friendly. Yeah, they've been friendly throughout the game, so I think it might have been sold to him. Uh, and that was a long time ago. I shouldn't even be checking ruler personalities. Regardless, Norway has province number one. And they've just not taken Sweden. You know, Sweden has been holding down some allies throughout this game, but none of them, they've all been pretty far away. You know, if Sweden had allied, say, Fenmark and Novgorod, I think it would make some sense for, uh, for Norway to be uneasy about attacking them, but it's always been guys like, well, well, let's take a look at these again. I saw Hungary on there. I think I saw Cologne. Yeah, Hungary, Cologne, Magdeburg, and the city of Burgas. None of those could get up here and contest Norway. Norway could just sit on Sweden. If some of them did up here, I think, did get up there, I think the war score would uh, eventually just end up favoring Norway taking Sweden. But perhaps the AI knows something I don't. There are a lot of things that I don't know. Uh, the border gore over here. I don't know why they chose to give these four provinces exactly to Portugal. I think it would have been preferable for them to maybe give them Biera, perhaps instead of Bragantia, or maybe even instead of Quambra, you know, give them more than uh, <clears throat> or just, just one contiguous stretch of land instead of two chunks, but regardless, uh, Portugal will have those provinces again until Spain decides it's time. Down here, it looks like Cuba has won the Central African Lottery. No longer allied with Kikonja and appears to have won a war against them, so uh, Cuba Luba, perhaps without the Lubin component, uh, OP. Rwanda has not done anything about Nakor. This is still in uh, the hands of three different nations. Kilwa and Sofala, if they have fought, I didn't notice. Uh, I think Kilwa had all the way down here at the beginning. They have, however, taken some provinces from Mogadishu, including Mogadishu itself. Mogadishu now only existing in Bardera. Warsangali doing quite well at coming in and getting rid of them. They've done a pretty good job of limiting Ethiopia's growth. Uh, does Warsangali have a good alliance? Yeah, they're allied with Kilwa. That would be pretty tough for Ethiopia to take down. Uh, they are on Tech 14, Dwar Sangali's 13, and Kilwa's 14. So, despite having about 40,000 guys, uh, I think that would be a very even war, and Ethiopia just doesn't want to risk that. I can, I, I, I can respect it. And this war is over. Persia has lost some land. You can see that Aleppo, Araka, Rabba have all gone into the hands of the Mamluks. Uh, it appears that they've also been made to release Eretna, so that's how things have gone there. Without the centralizing and overpowering force of the Ottomans, Anatolia has really just been a mess. Nobody has been able to really claim hegemony. Uh, Karaman was doing great at the start of the game, but they got wrecked by alliance chains. Kandar was doing all... Well, Kandar has just been slowly and steadily growing. But now having some issues with Bulgaria over here. Uh, Jermion has been released and conquered a few different times. Aiden is a new release. Saruham was even up in uh, Europe for a little bit, but was then conquered by mostly Mentessa, but uh, Kandar also had a hand in that. Also, at some point when I wasn't looking, Byzantium was finally conquered, finally, by Venice. Their last province in Castoria lost, and I don't even see the Byzantine tag in any of these provinces anymore. So, ah, uh, uh, alright, Byzantium has a core on Morea. 
Um, I, I don't see them anywhere else. So Byzantium could still be released in Maria if someone wanted to do that. But uh, otherwise, the Eastern Roman Empire has finally fallen. Made it about 150 years longer than they did in real life, but uh, so it's gone. Sicily has been given their island back after the League War. Naples, another tag that was hurt pretty badly by that. Uh, Naples just has its normal lands that it has at the start of the game. Uh, and Sicily holding down alliances with the Livonian Order, Poland, Odiev, and Milan. So it'll be tough for Naples to take those back, even if it wants to. I don't think Persia is going to hurt all that much from losing that war. They can look to other places. They have, in fact, taken these provinces from Afghanistan. So there's Bahmanis' ticket to uh, getting some colonialism. Unfortunately, they are dealing with rebels and rebels and rebels again. They just lost a couple provinces to Jean Pour. They have Gondwanese separatists, 27,000 of them. They have Garjadi separatists. Surprised they are not dealing with Bengali separatists. Uh, they still have the Bengal Delta province. Very rich one, by the way. So, have they fallen off the great power ranking because of that? Nope, they're actually in 7th appear to have grown a little bit and have embraced global trade, but still hurting where colonialism and the printing press are concerned. Persia is still waiting for the printing press. But after the printing press, it's pretty much whoever has money can start embracing institutions. The Enlightenment takes a while to get around. Uh, you know, a lot of that based on uh, whether, I think it's based on whether people have taken innovative maybe. You know, you can build your universities, but it doesn't take up nearly as fast as uh, those provinces with manufactories do. And Nitra has reconsolidated after losing those provinces to Hungary in the League War. They said, uh, yeah, that's great. You give us those back. So Toronto actually taken by Serbia, Hungary now existing only in Oltenia. Allied with only one province minor, Sweden. Uh, I guess if that's the case, it's no wonder that Mitra took all of those back so easily. Not seeing all that much of an Austrian army. They've got 11,000 right now. Do they have other people elsewhere? They do. They, they still have 52,000 about. Are they at war? They're not. Still have the Union over the Platinate. Does Misovia still have theirs over Goland? They do. No massive personal unions occurring this game. You know, we have seen a couple there. And, uh, I think the notable one that we had earlier in the game was Nevers with one over Gascony for a while. Of course, as you can see, Gascony now free, has been for a while. Now looking to take the last chunk out of Brittany. Uh, that would put him the closest to forming France out of anybody over here. But uh, they'd need to take on Austria. And uh, they're allied with Austria. So, don't think we'll see France re-emerging, at least not from the results of Gascony forming it. Perhaps if Austria has some uh, bad luck in a war and gets some French separatists, things could happen. But for now, uh, for now, no France. For a long time, no France. Let's check colonialization, colonization progress. There we go. Uh, Norway looking to finish up its fifth province up here and form a colonial nation as soon as Hoshalaga here finishes. Wow, they've actually sniped out that center of trade from Newfoundland. The Brits are not going to be happy about that. Regardless, as soon as this finishes, we will uh, presumably have Vinland. Toulouse has been a part of the colonial game for a while. Uh, they haven't actually created a colonial nation here, but they actually have one, two, three, four, five, s okay, so they do have five provinces uh, colonized or, or well, finished or at least starting to be colonized down here as soon as Nantakok and uh, Powhatan finish. They will have their things. 
Looks like some of the natives have started expanding. I think Shawnee was migratory, but now has three provinces. Uh, Creek continuing to do pretty well for itself. Caddo at war. I think that was them that just got beat. They're fighting Fox. Chickasaw, Pawnee, and Fox. Mighty Caddo uh, not looking all that mighty right now. Brittany did do a little bit of colonialization down here. They colonized Borado and Cauches, both in modern-day Texas. But they're a tad distracted right now with Gascony eating them. <laughs> both Normandy and Finister, or Finister going to Gascony, and that's the last bit of easy expansion that Gascony will be able to do. Uh, Provence is still here in Anjou, but does have a big alliance chain, including Brabant, protecting them. Whereas Toulouse is protected... Uh, honestly, like, Toulouse is not weak. They're pretty strong. But... Actually, uh, not really. They, they used to be protected by Spain. Now allied with only Lorraine, Catalonia, Sardinia. That could be an expansion point for Gascony or perhaps Austria. Gascony with a few alliances, Serbia, Odiev, Austria, Milan, and the Pope. So yeah, I could see Austria and Gascony uh, deciding that Toulouse needs to go. Fair bit of rich land over there. I mean, with almost just that, Toulouse was uh, developed enough to be a great power at one point. I think they have over 220 wrapped up in this land and perhaps their colonies. Did see a Toulouse in Brazil, so uh, they colonized down here as well, though the natives not happy with that. Those being Tupiniquim and perhaps Potiguara? Uh, who else were they fighting? There were two natives. Tupinamba. Or Tupinamba. Should pronounce that right. Not sh ah, okay. So, And that's where uh, a fair bit of Toulouse's army has gone. Though, perhaps they got there a bit late. And, alright, so Charka did form Inca. Well done to them. However, their reckoning has come at the hands of Spain, I think. Uh, we do see Spanish La Plata over here. We have Spanish Upper Peru. That will become, most likely, Spanish Peru at some point. I'm surprised they haven't eaten Charua, given that to Spanish La Plata. But, uh, so it goes. They've even colonized the Falklands. No one deciding to colonize the glaciers in South Georgia, though. Things have been kind of uneasy here in West Africa. Songhai has been the at least strongest in land, most power, uh, most powerful in land for a while. But we actually see Jeanne with a larger army than them, and Kong stuck around too. Uh, but really, it's up to Spain to decide when they want to eat everybody. And we do see the Mamluks fighting Ethiopia again. Finally have decided that they have more territorial ambitions down to the south. Looks like the Mamluks have maybe called in Oman. Or perhaps the Mamluks have attacked Hejaz. They have. Rather, Oman has attacked Hejaz thus bringing in their guarantor of Ethiopia and called in the Mamluks on their side. So I get the feeling that the Mamluks would rather have let Ethiopia be, but uh, being called in against them are now coming in and ready to siege, right now sieging down the fort in Ziela, Ziela center of trade in the Gulf of Aden node, have however bypassed their capital in Gondor. Actually Gondor not their capital, Shua made the capital of Ethiopia. Interesting. I thought I'd seen Ethiopia with a significant number of troops, as in almost 40,000. Um, 22 up here in Oman. Do they still have that? They still have 43,000. Do they have some... Ah, yeah, they have some up trying to siege down Aleppo. They've sieged down Damascus so far which is good, but uh, Aleppo a slightly sterner fort, level 4, next to Damascus's level 2. 
So the city of Burgas did manage to take Edirne from Mentessa, but now occupied by Venice. And there's the timer. So we saw the League War end in this episode. The year is now 1623. It's been uh, fun to see what all has happened here. Regardless, I've been Paragon Saber. Thank you for watching The Great Partition. I will see you next time.